Hello, welcome to this video about how to burn an image for the Raspberry Pi using Etcher. Etcher is a pretty common program that you can use for making an image or taking an image and putting it on an SD card to which you can boot your Raspberry Pi. This video is going to be uh, linked from my other videos on various operating system installations. Uh, I did this about a year ago and Etcher has been updated, so we're going to do it again just so we have the reference for a current version in 2019 instead of the older version which probably is exactly the same but I like to keep things current uh, and that would mean we have to go ahead and do another one so I'll put a link to the Etcher website so that you can see it there are also other alternatives and I will cover those as well but be aware that you have several different versions of Etcher you can download uh, you can download the 64-bit portable version, the 32-bit installed version, the 32-bit for Windows portable version. And if you're not sure what portable means versus installer, installer installs it like an application that you would use like Notepad or Paint or one of those. And the portable version means that you can just put it on a flashcard and run it. We're also going to explore the Mac OS version of Etcher if I can get it to work correctly and actually get an SD card to show up the way I need it to but my Mac is not in great shape so that may come later uh, I'm not intending to cover the Linux version of Etcher because if you are burning an image through uh, Linux to put on a Raspberry Pi you probably already know more about using DD and that would be probably the way I would go if I was doing it and you probably wouldn't be using a graphical interface for burning an image. Uh, if there's demand for it, I will do it. Let me know in the comments if you want to see the Linux version as well. I can definitely do that. However, I don't have any intention at this time of doing so because I don't see where there's going to be a lot of need for it. Most people running Linux are pretty familiar with how to make images. So we can definitely do that. I'm going to concentrate on the Windows version and the OS X version, or Mac OS, sorry so that those people who are less familiar with burning images have some experience with it. And Etcher, as I said, is not the only way you can do it, and I'm going to cover all of the ways that I can think of that I typically use that are worth exploring so that you can choose which one works best for you. Etcher is one of the more common ones, and it's one of the easier ones. So I'm going to minimize this. And I've got a shortcut to Etcher right here. I've already got it running because I've already recorded this video once and found out that using the SD card from my old 3DS obviously was going to be way too small to write this image. So I had to restart the video and find another SD card. So here is our image. And what we're going to be doing for an example video is we're going to be installing the 11.13.2018 Raspberry Stretch full install. Probably could have gotten away with a light install with the uh, smaller SD card, but I have plenty of SD cards, so that's not really a problem. So what we've got here is we're going to select the image, and I believe you can just drag the image on top of it, and there we go. Now the key feature, I'm going to blow this up so that you can see it a little bit better. Actually, I'm not because it won't let me. Will not resize. So I will go over everything. Apologize if this bores you a little bit. However, I think maybe this might be useful for some people as far as the things you should check before you get started. So I have the image file here. It gives me the size of 5.93 gigabytes. Be aware that this size should be smaller than the size of the SD card that you are burning to. If it is not, then you're going to have problems. In the cases of things like Linux where you're installing an operating system, or Raspbian, or however you're installing it, well, you're going to need a lot more space because this is going to be your basically your hard drive for your computer. We are using Etcher 1.49 in case this video is being watched in the future and there's a newer version and you're seeing inconsistencies. We are running 1.49 at this time. So we're going to go into the settings because there are some things that I just do not care about in the settings. I don't want it to validate right on success and I don't want it to use any of these options. I also don't want it to eject on success because I want it to do that myself. Uh, one of the problems that I've had with eject on success in the method that I use is that it ejects the SD card and then reinserts it and it becomes a problem of 
well, vicious cycle. Uh, it can send the report errors and usage statistics because I'm not terribly concerned about those. You can turn that on or off as you choose. So now I'm going to go back and now I'm going to flash the card. And it gives me a nice little message telling me that I need to confirm it, which you probably missed. Or you saw a black flash and it made no sense. But that was what happened. And now it's flashing the drive and it's telling me it's going to take just a few minutes. So while it's doing this, I want to talk about what the objective is of doing this. An image file consolidates all of the files that it needs to boot the system or make the system work in a basic environment for a specific device in most cases, unless it is like Linux or something like that, a full version where you're doing a live DVD. But in this particular case, we're dealing with a Raspberry Pi. So it has a specifically designed Raspberry Pi image with all of the files needed to boot the drive. It's putting those on a, an SD card, which is what the Raspberry Pi uses for a hard drive. Uh, as it reads and writes data and does that what it wants to do with it, it takes that and uses it for storage, it uses it for reading files, it uses it for launching applications. So you want to get something reliable, you want to get something that's relatively quick to read. Uh, even though the Raspberry Pi does not have the fastest controller out there, it certainly benefits from having a class 10 or higher SD card. Uh, I don't even know if there's anything really higher that would be worth putting in there. I actually need to do some speed tests on those and find out. But that's beside the point of this video. Just be aware that you probably don't want to get the cheapest card. This is the area where you don't want to cheap out. Uh, your Raspberry Pi was fairly cheap to begin with. A quality SD card is going to suit you better than a cheap one. Uh, I see a lot of things from people who mention that their cards seem to last about four or five reboots. And then I find out that they ordered some cheap collection of cards from some unreputable dealer somewhere and that explains a lot about what the problem was probably going to be. Uh, not saying even quality cards don't die, but they're a lot less likely to. So, with that being said, I would prefer to err on the side of caution because, as an example, I saw a $100 one terabyte SSD drive for sale, and I'm sorry, but I don't feel like I should trust my data to the cheapest bidder. I'll leave that for somebody else. Might be a great deal, but I prefer to keep my files intact rather than not. And as this runs through, it gives you a status update. If you didn't check the options when it's completed, it will verify all the files, which takes a good bit longer. There is benefit to verifying the files if you decide to leave that option on. It makes sure that everything was written correctly. It does cause problems in some certain specific situations. A lot of times those situations will make you aware in advance that trying to read the drive after it's been written is going to be a problem. In this particular case, I found that it doesn't matter either way, per se, perhaps it does, but I've never experienced that problem. So verification can be good, can be bad. It's your choice. I prefer not to do it in most cases, especially in this because it's going to take me less than 10 minutes to write the drive, and in 10 minutes, if it fails, I can write it again in 10 minutes, and I'm not really out that much time because it's going to take it an equivalent amount of time or longer to verify that the data was written, so that works out pretty well for me. And this is the new screen where it actually is showing you more information about what's happening, and that's kind of a good thing. It tells you a uh, little bit about some things that are going on. They've got a nice little uh, Belina operating system, I guess, with Pi Hole and Raspberry Pi to equal no ads within the whole network, which is awesome. We're, we're going to do a similar experiment with, with uh, Diet Pi where we're going to install that. I intended to do it last year, but we kind of got wrapped up in some other things and never got to actually to get it to go, although I did actually put the, ins the install on and did start to configure it. I never actually bothered to finish it. Uh, at the time, it just didn't see the point of uh, a lot of things that it was asking to do and I think it's matured since then so we'll go through and put that in a more practical application a little bit later and as we count down 
Now this is in particular case is writing natively to the SD card controller on my laptop. So for better or for worse, <coughs> I can get better speeds on some different types of methods for writing to SD cards. This is just what we're doing in this particular case. I, I feel like everybody should know how to write to an SD card. I could definitely be making an assumption that's wrong or presumption, I guess that would be. So if you uh, you need some assistance in some methods that are preferred to write to SD cards, if you don't have a laptop with an SD card controller, there is really no need to go buy one. There are definitely enough adapters out there that can meet your needs, whatever they might be, to make sure that you can write SD cards without having to have a laptop itself. I just happen to have a laptop and a desktop, both with SD card controllers in them, so I can write in either. Uh, I do know my desktop gets better speed than this, but it's currently doing some things, rendering some stuff, and I don't have the ability for that. And we're down to the wire. And of course this cancels it, which we definitely don't want to do. All right, so our flash is complete. And as of this part of it, this is pretty much all we need to know on how to write an SD, how to write an image, which would be an IMG file. Disk image file, IMG, to a f SD card. And then we will proceed with the installation, whatever you're watching. We referred you to this video, you can return to that video and see the rest of the process on what exactly is entailed with installing an operating system and a little bit about what it's all about. But, like I said, I don't want to have to redo this video 13, 14 times that I am actually doing the installation. I'd rather just focus on the installation and refer back to this video for those people who need instructions. I would definitely entertain any questions that you might have, and I thank you for your patience with my voice. I actually spent a month recently where I had no voice whatsoever, could not speak at all, which honestly just killed me. It's such a challenge when you're not able to speak, and speaking is kind of your thing. So apologize for my voice, I apologize for the scratchiness, and I apologize if you had any difficulty hearing me. Unfortunately, this is as loud as I can talk right now. So thank you for watching. And again, return to the video that you were watching before that brought you to this one if you were watching one of my install videos. If you haven't watched one of my install videos, you might find them interesting. Uh, I am going to post the start posting the 2019 operating systems that are out so far this year as of early 2019. And there's some really interesting ones that have come out that I really want to visit that I feel have matured enough that actually work well. So if you're not watching those, definitely go check them out. If you are watching those, Head on back to the one you were watching and check out the other ones as well because you may find something interesting and challenging that may accomplish a task that you want to accomplish better than what you happen to be looking at. So know your options before you get through it. Uh, again, we're going to cover the Mac OS version of this in another video as soon as I can get my Mac to cooperate. And we're going to cover some other ways to write SD cards and get that framework set up prior to actually starting the operating system installs. So thank you for watching. I'll see you guys later.